three, two, one. <laughs> oh my God, that's cold. Yeah, so you probably only heard one crack at that point, and we had a little mishap subconsciously. Premature, I like to call it premature crackulation. Yes, you did another premature crackulation. Um, but I'll wow, let it slide. Was, yeah, wow. wow that was good. Wow. <laughs> yeah. When are you going to say the wow? <laughs> um, welcome back, guys, to You Bet Your Radio Podcast. Again, as always, I'm Miles, You Bet Your Guy. This is the coldest podcast in all the Midwest. We got some, the topics we got today are, we got an interview with the ranch girl. She interviewed the, or she interrupted the senator. We also will talk our new social media pages. Um, and then we'll, then we'll talk a little uh, Midwest vacation. I know we did before, but this will be a little bit different than before because I'm going on vacation next week. Let's and I'm get, here by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in the show. Here at You Betcha, we know that life is way too short to hold your own drink, and that's why we have the Bev Buckle. Now, the Bev Buckle is a belt buckle that is the world's first retractable drink holder. And I tell you what, this thing holds your bush lattes like a charm. They are handmade here in the U.S., and these guys were also on Shark Tank, so they are the perfect gift for someone who loves to drink bush lattes, but, you know, just doesn't want to be bothered with the fact of holding the bush latte. You can find these guys on their social media at BevBuckle or on their website, BevBuckle.com. That's B-E-V-B-U-C-K-L-E.com. And if you want 15% off of your order, use promo code YouBetcha with no space. That's Y-O-U-B-E-T-C-H-A, YouBetcha, promo code 50% off at BevBuckle.com. And I hope that you guys love your Bush Latte holder. I want to talk to you guys about U Motors, Motorsports and Marine located in Fargo, North Dakota and Pelican Lake, Minnesota. They have all of the best brands, Honda, Yamaha, Ski-Doo, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, Nautique Boats, Super Boats, Supreme Boats, all of the boats, and even Avalon Pontoons. If you mention this ad, you can get 20% off parts and accessories, and obviously some exclusions may apply, but you can get 20% off parts and accessories. You can check them out on Facebook, Instagram, but also at their website, umotorsinc.com. Again, that's umotorsinc.com. I would venture to say it's almost the nectar of the gods. Back, baby, back. I want my push. Oh my God, that's cold. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks again for tuning in to episode eight of the You Betcha radio podcast. Again, I am Ryan, the t-shirt guy, here with Miles, the You Betcha guy. Guys, remember, go follow us on all social media channels. Now, at oh, you betcha at the main page, um, you're going to want to go give that one a follow. That's where all of our main content is distributed. But, man, we just spiced things up yesterday. We now have a Ryan the T-Shirt Guy Instagram, Facebook page, at Ryan the T-Shirt Guy. Hey, hey, finally. We also have a new... We're going to call it a Midwestern meme page. The, meme videos. The meme videos. Style. Um, the reason behind this, and it is called Mom's Hot Dish, that is at moms.hotdish on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Go follow it. This is going to be where a majority of our submissions um, from our followers. Yeah, we basically did it because we just got sent a lot of funny videos and cool videos but they didn't necessarily fit into the page. And we just didn't have a place to put them. So now mom's hot dish at mom's dot hot dish is going to be the new page, the at you, oh, you betcha Midwestern meme page. Um, it's going to be some pretty funny the stuff. Official one. The official. Yeah. You've already put some stuff out there um, today and well, and we'll get I, into that in a couple minutes. Yeah. Here, but. I can tell it's going to be good. So, Go follow us on social media, guys. You bet your account, Ryan the T-shirt guy, Mom's Hot Dish. Tell me, um, T-shirt guy, what's going on with the shirts? Yeah, so uh, you guys are going to be listening to this on potentially on the day that the shirt the shirt order closes down. So Wednesday at yeah. midnight, we're closing down the shirts. 
You're not going to be able to get your St. Patty's Day drinking shirt. You're not going to be able to get your new, oh my God, that's cold shirt in multiple different colors. Yeah, so you're if you're listening to this on Thursday, we're very sorry, but it, that's what you get for not following the page close <laughs> enough. Um, yeah, it was, I, I was really pumped about releasing these, oh my God, that's cold shirts because I've wanted to do it since like October. Yeah. But I just wasn't quite sure that the brand was there yet, and so I just kept beating the saying to, into the ground um, until I felt like people were knew it well enough to where we could sell a lot of them. Yep. Um, yeah, and we did, so that was pretty cool. The um, St. Patrick's Day shirts, just like, Putting out a green shirt is just like it's like fun. I don't know. And we talked about that too. Everyone's looking. There, you're heading to Walmart. You're heading to Fleet Farm. You're heading anywhere where you can just get a green shirt, regardless of what it says. But the cotton poly Kelly green combo. This is so the, fl- Ryan, it's so Ryan the t-shirt flush. guy is gonna nerd out here for a sec. <sighs> it's one of the comfiest shirts out there. Man. Yeah. And and just to have like a cool branded St. Paddy's Day shirt, people are gonna recognize it out at the bars. It's gonna be it's it's one well, of my that's favorite what the ones hope so is, far. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So which one are you gonna be wearing on St. Patrick's Day Miles? It's like picking one of your favorite children. It's just really <laughs> hard to do. Um I would say it is it kind of bad to wear your own saying on St. Patrick's Day? The oh my god, Not that's cool. I mean, I guess Nectar of the Gods was kind of coined by me as well. Yeah, I might be wearing the sh- shirt. Sure, still um, that's the OG too. Yeah, like, the, the humble beginnings almost yeah, represent what to, it is. To the first order that or the you Betty. I do like the black on green. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I don't know. I I'll be drinking heavy. I'll be rocking the one of the you bet. Maybe I should just wear. I should do changes like a wardrobe yeah. change, like every f- few hours throughout the night. Go to the bars the day before and say, "Hey, can you hold this in the back so when I get to this <laughs> bar, will you give it to me and I'll change shirts right yeah. there?" Um, that could be an option. But um, what about you? What are you gonna wear? Yeah, I'm going with the. Oh my god, that's cold. That's it's probably one of my favorite designs so far. I did really like the nectar of the mountains, but the white and the red just didn't go well with the green. Yeah, it would have looked like Christmas too yeah. much. So, um, so that yeah, shirt gonna, doesn't exist. Hopefully, uh, yeah, I'll slide myself one under the table, um, so I don't have to pay a full price for it. But yeah, you're probably gonna do that when I'm on vacation next week. <laughs> so if you want a if you want a free shirt, reach out to me when my house is gone. So no. tell me, okay. <laughs> so tell me, Ryan, you now have your own page. Um, I really don't want this to go to your head because this is a big deal. Um, you've only posted once. <laughs> if you haven't seen Ryan's profile picture <clears throat> slash first post on his page, you got to go to at Ryan, the t-shirt guy right now. Stop the recording. Just go to look at it. Um, it's just Ryan's face with a t-shirt emoji. Yeah, that's uh, great. It's an electric first post. <laughs> yeah. It's it's what it should be, and the co- and the caption too. Like we're live. Yeah, like let's go. <laughs> um, as of right now, he hasn't posted again, so I'm gonna have to get on his ass about content. He never yeah, sleeps. Yeah. It has been 24 um, hours, so so we're TikToking here, Ryan. But I'm sure right when we get done here, you will uh, post something up because yeah, we'll, we'll be packaging up some of the shirts and stuff. Yep. Um. Yeah, what what do you foresee happening with your page? Because I I really do want this to be like, I will obviously offer up ideas and, yeah. and content and bounce ideas off you, but I also want it to be like your page and run by you. Yeah. So what do you what are you thinking? I think it's just gonna be a, it's gonna kind of be a mix of things. First off, starting with like a seeing like what you and and your brand is doing from a different perspective, like not from you or not like a behind the scenes, like on the Instagram story or whatnot. Um, You're going to see it from a different individual that is tied with the brand. Um, While, you know, I'm essentially growing a brand within you betcha. Um, So no, I mean, and we've been throwing ideas off each other. There's so many different avenues for content and, uh, and funny content for that matter. Like what, Ryan? You're giving me the the political answer here. I want to hear some ideas. Well, we can't. We you can't. Yeah, just, we can air them out here. 
Wear them out. <laughs> I, I don't what know do if got? I want to air them well, out. What are the photos? I'm you, only what, one are the, po- what are the photos going to look like? Are you going to post photos? Yeah, we're going to be posting photos, videos. I mean, I'm a big like, like behind the scenes. Like, let's show like me. And this is more, more so I would say for stories, but like, I like to show people the process of what it looks like to get their shirt printed or. So I would like to see almost like a mini series of like you up in the merch's nest, the merch perch, whatever we like to call it. Mm -hmm. There's one other name. I can't remember it right now, but you know, just a little bit like I I almost want to see. You like I picture Ryan as like my fourteen year old son, <laughs> and he's finally getting to that age where he's developing his own personality. He's developing his own thoughts and ideas. Um, son, it's and, time for your own Instagram page. <laughs> and so it's time for your own Instagram page. Um, your your younger brother has now moved out of your room because you guys had bunk beds, right? Yep. This is fall fall this metaphor here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you have your own room and it's a blank canvas for you. So you can do whatever to this room as you wish, put up posters, rearrange the room. Maybe you still want bunk beds and you keep the bunk beds. I almost want you to be like, I almost want to like be like, Ryan, all right, take this hundred bucks and go buy some stuff for your area and see what you do with it and do content around that. Like, yep. I, I definitely uh like a stipend. Yeah, yeah, I want to it's it's like a each like a old school like trading <laughs> trading spaces uh or it was a TLC or something trading spaces where they have a budget and they like have to redo an entire room 100 bucks. There you go. The um, lo- the loft. If the you come back nest. with a lava lamp and that's it, <laughs> I swear to god, Ryan. <laughs> But I am a huge lava lamp guy. <laughs> I used to have Didn't a purple we talk and about lava and lamps on the podcast. The we might day? have, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for them. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I think you face lit up when I said that. So when I said what? When I said that I give you a hundred bucks. Oh yeah, that's that'd be fantastic. I mean, if, <laughs> if I you could spend just, it all on candy, <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> I'm gonna come back with you. A literally are pack like a dude. not a 14 year old. You're like Some a nine year old. Our energies. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't like you can't go to Menards or Home Depot without hitting the snack section. So it'll have to be a quick like five hour energy. Um, I'm gonna have to go find some help there. Uh, I'm gonna talk to one of the old associates who literally knows where every screw and nail in is is in the store. Um, Do you have any ideas of something you want to like build or buy right away for up there? See, I'm not a huge I'm not a huge builder like. Well, even if like, <clears throat> do you need some more shelves? I, I think that do was the first need- thing I was going to say. I think I I would I would need some more shelves, maybe like a mini table. Um, <sighs> gosh, you'd have to give me some time to think about it. Yeah, you're putting me on the spot right now, and I'm not. I know I'm that not- was my goal to see how you handled it. Right, <laughs> I didn't handle it well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the one that came up with the idea here, even though I asked you. Um, no, I'm I'm excited. See what you come up with it. I think it's just like a fun, like there's like little, no pressure, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. If it goes well, it goes well. If it doesn't go well, we'll just kind of keep adjusting. It doesn't really matter, but yep. um, it's a fun thing to do. And I think that you'll have fun with it. The other thing that we're doing is mom's hot dish. So you're probably wondering about the name. Why is it called mom's hot dish? And the only answer I can really give you is it just felt right. <laughs> we we were talking different meme pages, like what they're called and all this. And I don't, I don't even remember what led into it, but I was just like, Hey Ryan, what if we just called it mom's hot dish? Yeah. It was out of nowhere. But, and you're like, uh, I think that's just the name. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was cool with it. Like r- right off the bat. Yeah. Um, then we just made the page. The, uh, the logo for mom's hot dish is just a single tater tot. Um, which I think people, no one's questioned it yet. So I think that we did it right in terms of like, oh, tater tot hot dish. Got it. Um, But like I said, we get lots and lots of photos and videos of just like funny bush light content, funny Midwest stuff. And it's like, if we posted all that on our page, it would kind of dilute the brand of what we're trying to build on the You Betcha page. But we've always wanted somewhere where we can put that. And so mom's hot dish gives us that opportunity um, to create memes 
to uh, take the stuff that people send us and put it out there for everyone to see because we laugh at some of the stuff <laughs> that gets sent us, you right, know? Right, Um Yeah. No, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, like you were saying, we get submissions like daily. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of like a no limits page where it's like we have like five to ten cool memes or meme videos with throw out there during yeah, the like day. Today like, I posted boom. three times. Yeah. If I would have had six pieces of content, <clears throat> I probably would have posted six times. Um, so it'll be fun to build. I'm I'm a little bit nervous that we might start doing this page and it might like become bigger than the <laughs> you betcha brand. I, was I mean like that, that would be awesome. I don't I wouldn't care but it's just like funny like putting all that effort into making these like elaborate videos on the you betcha page and then like the submission page and meme page ends up being bigger than the other one would be kind of funny, but, but at the same time without you betcha, there is no mom's hot but, dish. Right. You no, know? but that's, I mean, that's the like state of the internet, right? It's, right. Yeah. it's that that's the stuff that people want to see. It's, yep. it's, you know, it's what entertainment looks like in a 2019 world. So, mm -hmm. um, we've been wanting to do a page like that for a while. Uh, we finally felt like we were there. And so, we're trying our hand at that and we'll see what happens really. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to be I'm going to be so dialed in on Ryan the t-shirt guy that I'm not going to take a look at it. All right, too you often. guys heard him say this here. If <laughs> I have to get on his ass at any point <laughs> and tell him that he needs to be creating more content, I'm going to bring this clip back. This is the beauty of doing this and be like, "Ryan, you said you're going to be so deep into this." So deep. We'll see what happens, Ryan. So, all right, this week we have a interview. Finally, have an interview again. Been slacking it took a little like a bit. Two week hiatus. Yeah, been slacking a little yeah. bit. You bet your Palooza kind of threw a wrench in that <laughs> with a ranch girl. I mean, this girl. So this girl was in a video, and all she said was, "I'm just trying to get some ranch." She interrupted U.S. Senator Kirsten. Gillibrand, I think I called it. I called her Gillibrand in one I of the videos, have, yeah. but it's Gillibrand. I should have done some research. She's running it. for president, so a presidential Actually. candidate. Well, there's like everyone and their mother sure. is running yeah, yeah. for president like, right now. Yeah. But yes, she has declared that she is running for president. <laughs> um, and she gets interrupted by this girl Hannah Kinney, and she's she goes to the University of Iowa. She's a, she's been interviewed by CNN. She's been interviewed by the Washington Post, like some ridiculous names, but I'm pretty sure that this was the most epic interview she's ever done because it's you betcha, right? It's it's better than CNN. <laughs> it's better than the Washington yeah. Post. That's what they're saying, I think. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> I think that's what they're saying. Um, so it was fun to talk to her and we, we kind of, I, I razz her a little bit about being famous and we talked. We talk some ranch. All right, guys. I would like to welcome on to the podcast, Hannah, the ranch girl. She was in a video with a U.S. Senator running for president. Um, and she's most known for the line. I'm just trying to get some ranch. Hannah, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good right now here in Iowa. It's like a toasty 20 degrees. So, you know, we're thriving over here. There you go. Um, so first of all, I would just like to say that thank you for pushing the ranch movement. Um, <laughs> you are a true icon here in the Midwest. How does that feel? Uh, it's very interesting to go from someone who has like 400 Twitter followers to all of a sudden a thousand and receiving tweets about people saying that I am their spirit animal or that they're like in love with me. So it's been a really weird transition, but I believe I navigated it somewhat well. Yeah, there you go. You know, it, what's it like being famous now? It's kind of weird because like a lot of times I think famous, I think of like people who are in movies or people that like if you say their name casually, most people are going to understand like who they are. And when people ask me that, it's just like kind of weird for me to be like, oh, man, I, I guess that's kind of me. Like at least if you say ranch girl, a lot of people are aware of what's happening, especially in the Midwest. So I think that name recognition is like really, really weird. Or like some people have like recognized me based just like, on my face, which is even weirder. Yeah. So, um, you realize that you upstaged a person, someone running for president, right? So 
she was talking probably at the restaurant, all of her policies, trying to push what she was doing, trying to gather the people. Um, and then you just walked by, said one little comment, and you stole the show. Was that your plan going into it? Definitely not my plan. <laughs> I uh, wholeheartedly and honestly was just trying to get some ranch. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was someone running for president. I realized it was someone political. And at this time in Iowa, I don't know if you can get that vibe where you're from, but Iowa hot ticket state during the first part of the preliminary, prelim, you know, beginnings. Yeah, yeah, uh, you got it. And yeah can't say that word but i figured it was somewhat somewhat important and honestly i wasn't even trying to upstage her or like a lot of people thought i was like snubbing her (laughs) but she was in the middle of the restaurant i was honestly i was eating there so i was just trying to get some food like you do at a restaurant yeah that's why i threw my hands up because i didn't want her to think like i was trying to ask her a question i was just like i'm just trying to get some ranch and now (laughs) everyone's in love with that phrase yeah that i saw the people were making t-shirts and stuff about it um, did they ask you for the, to, to be able to do that or did they just start making shirts? So they just started making shirts and I, uh, I quote tweeted it on my Twitter, which is like kind of funny, just like talk about Twitter as if it's like real news, but that's my life now. Yeah. Um, and I was like, nice shirts. Do you need someone to help you show them off? And they asked me to message them. And I've had like people, my family, my friends, even like random people on the internet telling me that like, I need to get royalties. I need to get compensation. And I didn't even think about that. I mean, like originally I was just like, how cool is it that someone like right. made a shirt that I like something that I said. Um, but then I was told, like I reached out cause like originally I thought I was just going to get free shirts, which alone I was like, that's really cool. Um, and then I found out I am actually going to get like some level of compensation from them, which blows my mind. That, I mean, that's cool. That's cool of them because I, I'm a little bit in that business as well of like, selling merchandise and trying to be the one that comes out with something first. Um, so for them to do that, I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's definitely nice for my college bank account. (laughs) There you go. So leading into that, so you are a student at the university of Iowa, correct? Yes. Tell me a little bit about your story. Um, you don't have to give me the whole long one, but just, you know, a quick brief where you're from, what you're doing at university, Iowa. Um, just a little bit about you. Yeah, definitely. So I am originally from Waterloo, Iowa, born and raised Hawkeye fan. My brother came here before me and I knew I was going to stay in state uh, for college, especially undergrad, since uh, I'm going to save that money for how to stay tuition. And I came here originally as a poli sci major thinking I was going to do law, realized that's not really what I wanted to do. Now I'm a communication sociology double major with some philosophy in there. And I am actually, I'm graduating this spring. Um, I'm an RA right now with 40 of the greatest 18 year olds and 19 year olds. And are uh, they, hold on. Are they, really, are they going nuts about you being the ranch girl or what? They are going nuts. To be honest, <laughs> I keep them updated. There's one of uh, my residents who lives right across this, the hallway from me is here. Like the same time I am. So when the whole thing was coming down, I would like come out of my room. I'd be like, Oh my gosh, hear this. So like, there's like a whole group of them that just started calling me the ranch girl or like we have these things called Hawk talks that we do. And they added on the outside, like it's a sign up sheet where they sign up for a time to come up and we just like check in with them and make sure that like they're doing okay with like academics and everything. Yep. And someone put slash meeting with ranch girl. <laughs> so that's been my life. I think it's, my life is just kind of one big meme nowadays, to be honest, but you, I've kind of gotten used to it. As much as you might not like to say it, it's, you are a walking meme now a little bit. Yeah. I like, the thing is like, I think it's kind of hilarious. Like, I mean, like I'm, I'm 22, but I'm still a college student. So like I, I was like, I explained to some people when I first saw that my duty partner had tagged me and I thought he had tagged me like in a meme relating to like being an RA or like (laughs) UI or something. And then that's when I saw the video. So like this whole thing stemmed from me thinking it was a meme. And then I found out I was the meme. Oh my, oh my God. That's me. (laughs) Yeah. Literally my thought. Um, sweet. Yeah. So what, you're kind of like doing a lot of stuff then. I mean, you got, you said you got some like double majors here and there. Did you ever think that maybe like, are you thinking about monetizing this? And I don't mean monetize. Like, are you thinking about running with being the ranch girl? Or are you kind of letting it just have its moment? And then you're like, I just want to move on with the rest of my life. I'm definitely here to like keep it for a while. Like, I think it's like a lot of fun. I also like, one of my favorite things is like, I'll respond to someone's tweet, which I try to do with like a lot of the positive ones. I don't respond to the negative ones. Cause like, I don't have time in my life for that type of attitude. But, um, when I 
try to people's feet, they're like, oh my gosh, you made my day. And I'm like, well, I'm just like one girl. And if I can make some people's day by simply responding to some tweets, like that makes me really happy. So I really enjoy doing that. I haven't tweeted since February 23rd. Honestly, I'm kind of like off my game, but the first couple, like the first day that it came out, I actually didn't have class, which was really helpful, but then I had to go back to school. So I was like, y'all, I don't have time to like constantly be on Twitter, even though I wish I honestly was able to do that. But yeah, I don't know. I haven't tweeted anything not ranch related yet, which is what I had done my entire other time being on Twitter. So we'll see like how much the, my audience on Twitter still likes my tweets when they're not directly related to the ranch thing, but I'm down to be ranch girl as long as the internet wants me to be. (laughs) There you go. I also think that you're you're the ranch girl as long as you keep it going, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I I uh, so I don't know if you've seen any of my ranch content, um, mm-hmm. but I am the self proclaimed ranch wrangler. Ranch wrangler, all right. Yeah, with not a W with an R, so it's a double R there. Um, Good. And so what I do is I go around and I review ranches. Um, I grade them off of what kind of viscosity they have. If they're high viscosity, if they're low viscosity. Um, and then the taste. So I kind of have a bone to pick with you. Are you ready? All right. So I, well, one, before we get into that, you've been on some like ridiculously huge publications and stuff interviewed, right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. So I was reading a few of those and it, it came out that you are a fan of ranch. That is, well, one, you're a fan of ranch that is homemade. So Uh I I agree with you on that, but you said that you like ranch that's thick. Is this true? Yes. Um, So I am a runny ranch, low viscosity guy um, when it comes to ranch. You can't dip in ranch like that, though. So it's more of a scooping technique at that point, in my opinion. So right. when when I do my pizza, I like to you know fold it in half and then do more of a scooping technique. Is the only reason why you like thicker ranch because uh, you like to be able to dip stuff in it? I mean, I think it just tends to have like a better flavor. I mean, the mess factor is definitely a thing. Also, I think most of the homemade ranches here in Iowa, at least the ones that I really enjoy, are the thicker ones. But I think the dipping makes my life a lot easier. Same with like French fries, because you really can't bend. I mean, you can bend French fries in half, but I think it's just easier when like the ranch does the work for you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny because we have two self-proclaimed ranch experts here and, <laughs> and, and we are each on either side of the uh, argument. Have, Why do you like the runnier ranch? The runny you have ranch. To fold your pizza in half. It just seems like a lot of work. It, well, one, it, it doesn't necessarily take away from the food you're eating, but it helps complement it in like the perfect way. Plus it's not as thick. And so you don't feel as bogged down after you're done eating the ranch. Um, and, and I tend to think that it's a creamier, better tasting ranch if it's runny versus if it's like thick and like, it's got, you know, it's trying too hard on the flavor and all that. That's my opinion on it. Mm, do you, okay. So, I see you. do you? My next question was: Are you a Hidden Valley fan? Because Hidden Valley is notoriously thick. What? How do you stand on Hidden Valley? So I don't want to say like a whole bunch related to direct companies, uh, because there is some stuff in the works. Oh wow! But, so. Um, Okay, so wait, this is breaking news. You are working on a sponsorship deal with certain ranch companies. Um, I don't think it's officially a sponsorship deal. Um, not gonna lie, as a twenty two year old college student, I don't know a lot of the business stuff. I'm not a business major. Um, but I do have some like friends and family who are helping me with like all like the lingo on various things. But I like I just like feel like it's safer for me, especially since on CNN they said I wanted a sponsorship from Wishbone and I didn't say that. Oh, so um, we have fake was, news on CNN? Is what you're saying? Yeah, on CNN, I had a Skype interview. I think it played Wednesday night um, around like 6.55 my time. It's on YouTube now if you haven't had a chance to see it. But I, yeah, I like ended the interview and I didn't say anything. And then once I was watching it live, at the end she said, Hannah is hoping for a sponsorship deal from Wishbone, which I didn't say. So now I'm just like making sure I don't say anything near what people could take as Mm. like sponsorship deals that I would like. But 
I would say I don't buy a lot of ranch myself, so I don't really know what my favorite bottled ranch is recently, especially since I essentially eat at the residence halls here, which they don't have like the bottled yep. ranch house. They have it like in their own containers. And then I eat at restaurants. So I don't know, honestly, what my preference is in bottles. I've been told that I should buy a whole bunch of them and do a taste test for Twitter. I haven't had time to do that, though. There you go. Yeah. So I think that's funny that you're like, I'm learning the lingo of like what it means in the business world and all that kind of stuff, because I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so it, it, breaking news, you are you're in the works with some sort of brand, ranch brand. Um and so you're going to plead the fifth on how you feel about Hidden Valley Ranch. I respect that. Um, I would say, again, I told you before that you were leading the ranch movement as of now. Um, you're probably the most famous ranch person that I know. Uh, <laughs> it's just a funny sentence to hear. Sorry. Yeah, you're famous. So uh, don't let the fame go to your head. Um, I would say... I want you, what I want you to do is to leave us with some words of wisdom to fellow people about ranch. Give me, give me something that is like, you know, I always say that may your ranch always be runny. Um, mm-hmm. That's my type of advice advice. I know that's not going to be your advice because you're a thick ranch girl. Yeah. What would your advice be to the, to the, you betcha uh, listeners about ranch, about Iowa, um, just anything in general, just to kind of leave it off? Um, I would say, don't let anyone tell you, you are the blue cheese of the world because you are the ranch (laughs) of the world. (laughs) And boom, right there. That's the best way to end it. Thank you, Hannah, for coming on. (laughs) That was an electric final words. Um, Thank you. That almost should be a t-shirt. (laughs) <laughs> maybe Ray gun. I don't know. Hit him up. Yeah. There you go. Um, awesome. Hannah, I appreciate you coming on. Um, I'm glad you could fit us into your schedule now that you're so famous. Oh my gosh. And Anytime. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And again, breaking news. She's in the works with a ranch company. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yep. See you later. Bye. All right. It should be like a, <gasps> I just got so much spit. Oh my god, that's cold. So much spit wow. on the mic. That was the longest I've ever heard. I didn't even go in for a second, second and third breath. Um, phenomenal interview with her. But before we get into that, um, yeah, what's going on? It- <laughs> <laughs> so if I we apologize if you can hear some faint music in the background. I think that we might have an 80s infomercial for aerobics going on next door. They are bumping music. We can hear people moving around um, on the, on the wall behind us. Yeah. I thought the, like your European mountain was going to fall down earlier. Yeah. They're really bumping over there. But we haven't heard any weights being dropped. So So, that's why like the 80s style, I feel like is more like they're not doing Zumba or something over there, you know, but so when we came in here, we didn't have a neighbor over there and they just moved in like a couple weeks ago or a week ago or whatever. And they have just been going to town every evening. So, and I, I'm saying <laughs> I'm, my guess is that there is some sort of fitness studio over there. Miles is like, no, I don't think it's a fitness studio. I'm like, you cannot have that much fun this many days in a row and have just music bumping every night. I don't know, man. If the, the human if, cannot, the, if the average, bush lattes are flowing every single night, you can have that much fun every night, man. Yeah. If if what if it was nah, just I got you there, Ryan. Well, no, I and I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Like, I'll, what if it was just a bunch of like thirty five to forty year old guys that they just have a bunch of couches in there? Yep. Well, I drove by fringe. and I saw some trucks in there, so they might be just be working on their trucks. But I don't you can know. only work on your trucks so much. They're really working on their trucks, Ryan. <laughs> I get it. Their the trucks need getting some. To them. Their trucks need some work. The winter is taking a toll on everybody's truck. So, anyways, <laughs> we apologize if you can hear the racket going on next door. Um, I'm that's go just check part it of being a you betcha fan is you got to deal with some of the ridiculousness of that we have loud neighbors in the bunker. 
But back to Hannah. She was super cool. We talked for a while after the interview. Um, little breaking news we had there. We won't share any information until she comes out with it. But breaking news, she might be in talks with a ranch brand. Um, so that's all I can say. May or may not. May or may not. It's allegedly maybe may or may not. Possibly, <clears throat> maybe not. So how did you get uh, how did you get connected with her? Like so I think it's the power of the you betcha. Can you give us a little background on the on on like where the where the DM or the message came from, like how she got. So literally, she said her friend from like high school tagged her in our video because she saw it, and she just commented back and said, "Hey, that's me," because <laughs> I did a video about the ranch girl, yeah. and I said, "Hey, DM up." She sent us a message, said, "Hey, would you want to be on the podcast?" She said, "Sure." Gave her a call. She, Oh, bush burp. First one of the day. First one of the night. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was it was pretty simple. So it's it's kind of crazy because the you you mentioned the power of you betcha, and I feel like if this incident or not incident, if this event would have happened on like the east coast or the west coast, where well, um, like she, a, I don't remember if this was during the podcast or not, but she told me that if I would have put that video out and someone would have tagged her in. That video, like last week, right when it happened, she goes, there's no way I would have saw it. There was so much stuff getting thrown right. at me. Um, so, like, it wasn't even a week but since that happened. But, yeah. like, in an internet world, like, that's kind of late to the party. You oh, could absolutely. say, air quotes, late to the party. Yeah. Um, but thank God we kind of were, because it fit into our schedule, whatever, to do that. Because then she said we wouldn't have been able to have her on the podcast, which is kind of wild, but... I mean CNN. She's, yeah, that's that's crazy. CNN fake news. <laughs> they they literally can you believe that? Yeah. They literally said that she was in talks or wants to talk and get a sponsorship from a brand and that wasn't even true. Like that's such like the tiniest what? minute thing to lie about. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like what? Let's, let's do a, let's a do story. A, let's do a what? Wheat thins? <laughs> Where? So uh, it, it, the video came out a week ago, you said. Yeah, about a week ago, I think. Well, when this airs, oh my God. <laughs> what Someone is knocking on? on the. Our fault. We are, just knocked we, on the. Are we going to get a knock back? We just knocked on the wall because something hit the wall. We had, well, and there's nothing. This is bad radio, right? So, <laughs> us just staring at the wall behind us. <laughs> so. Who filmed the video? I, I think it was Gillibrand's like squad was doing a doing like press stuff because she was there talking to Where's people. Where's the cred for Gillibrand's people? What do you mean? I mean, don't they have rights to that video? I mean, sure, but what do you mean? I'm just talking like there hasn't been any. You know how people give photo creds on it on social media? Yeah, I don't know what the original tweet was that did it though. Okay, it might have been one of them. I'm know. just wondering if someone else filmed it that she had she had no clue who they were. How did she get access to the video, and how did she like? Well, it just was posted on Twitter. She didn't post it. Someone else did. No, I I I, I get that, but like, even the, just the odds of her seeing it on the internet, like, hey, that's me. I'm gonna take credit for it, and then oh, yeah. all these people believe her. Oh, like, oh, that was yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, yeah. <laughs> The odds of someone seeing well, it got mm -hmm. a million views, so that helps a lot. Um, plus, people that know the bar probably recognize it was in Iowa. Sure, her friends probably saw it. Yeah, you know, I, I, the fact that she saw our video is That's way crazier wild. than seeing that initial video. Yeah, so we're like up there with like presidential candidate videos. I'm basically a presidential candidate, Ryan. You bet you 2020. <laughs> you bet you bet you 2020. Uh I think I forgot to ask her if if I could be a running mate in 2020, but um yeah, the <laughs> yeah, I if if I do the math and I carry the one <laughs> a plus a squared plus b squared is c squared. 
I'm basically a presidential candidate at this point after that after that interview with the ranch girl. You like that? Yeah, tough to disagree with that one. Yeah, I I don't think anyone would dispute that. Um, so I think you'd get a few votes. Yeah, not to brag, I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> Humble brag. Humble brag. Uh, yeah. I. So what? What is like? What's her next steps? What does she okay, want to? If, well, it depends. Because if I am her, and I have my mentality that I have. I'm milking this for all it's worth. I'm yeah. starting an Instagram page, starting a Twitter page, I'm starting a Facebook page about being the ranch girl. I'm taking as many appearances as I can. I'm doing ranch content up the yin yang. I mean, it's constant. But that's you, me. That's me. Right. So I did ask her, I don't know. I again, we talked for a while after the interview, so I don't remember which is which at this point, because it was just like a few hours ago. Yep. But at one point I asked her um, what, you know, like what's her mentality? Cause I did ask her that. And she said, you know, I like it. I like the attention and I like where it's, you know, where it's at, but like, absolutely. and, and obviously I want to stay relevant as long as possible, but I'm, I don't think I want to make myself stick around and create content like yeah, I'm going to take every interview that I can. I'm going to be doing, you know, as long as people want me around, I'll be around, but I'm not going to necessarily start this whole brand off of being the ranch girl. Yeah. And I think for her, the self-awareness to know that maybe that wouldn't be for her, she wouldn't want to do it. Yep. um, is probably good because it's a lot of work. People think it's all fun and games that just like, yeah chilling and making videos hanging out at the bunker yeah and nah, it's uh it's a lot of work and i mean just like any job right but that's one thing to remember is that it is a job so uh yeah it's yeah. interesting um the self-awareness and just like you're there you either know that you got it or you don't you yeah and it's one video and for her to want to create a brand around that and like you know her her life essentially changed after that video with all these interviews and like that could have shifted her path of, you know, what she wants to do for, for a career. And she, she chose just kind of, kind of to keep going the way she she, was. She's got a lot going on with her, like schooling. Like she's like a double major and and stuff, but, uh, she's an RA. Okay. Yeah. The whole, the The whole whole dorm hall saw the video. Oh yeah. They, yeah, they're, they're really riding her on the uh, (laughs) ranch girl bitch. She said, (laughs) Um, but I mean, it's just, let's also talk about that. The person running for president, uh, Senator Gillibrand literally got upstaged by a chick who just wanted some ranch. That's, I don't even know like how to comment on that. Cause that's like, it's true. And she took it too. Yeah, I think she said that, like, if they're ever back there, she'll buy her a pizza or something like that. Like, oh, you're oh, going to buy me an $18 pizza. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, no, I think that, like, that just stinks, man. I, I'm i really torn, too. This is kind of getting off of the ranch girl here, but I'm really torn how I want to approach political season the next year or two. That'd with be you bet you because it's like one of those things that's like <laughs> yeah stay out of politics but it's also like pretty electric to talk about politics oh absolutely um but i also think you got to be pretty informed to talk about politics so yeah so all in all ranch girl was <clears throat> awesome hannah thanks for coming on um sorry senator gillibrand but ranch is king and queen in the midwest and you learn that the hard way you learn that on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, and you got Ranch Girl. There's just no way around it. And we're back. All right, Ryan, I'm going on vacation next week. See ya. Yes. This is great because now I get to do whatever I want. I don't have to answer to anybody. And he's back. Just kidding. Um, <clears throat> I am going on vacation next week, Ryan. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'll be holding the fort down. Um, that makes me very nervous. No friends over. No. No yeah. parties. No loud music. I'm thinking about not telling you that I put a camera up 
and just see what happens. Yeah, I'm just actually gonna go next door now that we know that what's going on. That does sound like there. I'll come back and Ryan's put a hole in the back wall <laughs> so that his buddies next door that love fitness <laughs> can come and hang out. Slash he has easy access to their gym. But yeah, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to Southern California. It's usually kind of where my my family <laughs> takes their their winter warm vacation. Uh my family's just been kind of doing that forever. My grandparents, my parents, my family, we've just been doing it forever. Always so, to SoCal? Yeah, we're, uh, we're, it's, we'll be in the, the, the Coachella Valley. Like, don't think like Coachella. I'm like, I'm not going to Coachella, but like Coachella. in the valley, there's a bunch <laughs> of, there's a bunch of towns in there. It's basically yeah. like, like when people take trips to Scottsdale, like the desert area, it's basically the desert in California. Sure. Okay. Um, so I've never been. We'll yeah, we'll do a lot of golfing. We'll do a lot of sitting by the pool, a lot of drinking, a lot of eating. What um, any vacation should consist of. Right. And uh but <clears throat> the content never stops. I'm actually excited to do some like ranch wranglers there. Cause like Are tried, you gonna do an in and out? I might ranch wrangler. I might do a ranch wrangler at, at In and Out. Because that was like number two on my top three fast yep. food. Yep. I'd love to hear that one. And, and we usually do get there once while yeah. we're there. Um but yeah, so the podcast is gonna be interesting because we've never done it where we've been apart from each other. So what I think will end up happening is we'll probably like FaceTime each other, we'll record on both ends mash it together it might not be the prettiest podcast we've ever seen or done yeah we'll get it done though but it'll get done um i really hope that you don't burn the place down i really hope you don't run this company into the ground um <laughs> there's a lot of Fire. there's a lot of flammable Fire. stuff in here yeah <laughs> he's gonna well it seems like it. we almost got like i feel like i lost a thousand brain cells after s- smelling what the next door neighbor was just putting down. Yeah, the uh, the old uh, <clears throat> fumes from sealing the floor. Man, we've had some interesting, uh, again, off topic, but we've had some interesting neighbors so far. Um, great people, but, you know, we got, like, toxins, like, flowing underneath of the floor. Well, no, and, that like, was just, like, that was just, like, water. We had water what coming. What were we smelling? That, okay, so... <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Me and Ryan are gonna have a quick. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have a quick <laughs> ops meeting here. Um, it was so before this new tenant came in, he, the, our landlord, sealed the concrete floor. Okay, so that's what the smell was. Gotcha. It was horrendous. Gotcha. Okay, the so other issue we're having is the water was leaking underneath. Gotcha. The uh, wall on the other side. Yeah, I thought it was like some type of chemical that was coming under. No, no, oh, it was just water. Sure. Um. But our neighbors, actually, our neighbors are cool. Um, I uh, I donated some shirts to a to a stag. Have you ever heard of a stag, Ryan? No. So a stag is when a bunch of guys get together. They eat. They drink. They gamble a little bit. They gamble a little bit. Um, and then there's like raffle. They raffle off stuff, guns and just coolers. Dudes. It's just yeah, it's stag. You go stag. That's dang. Yeah. I'm kind of um, like, so we donated some stuff to that and that's one of our neighbors, cool. um, you know, asked if we could give him a few shirts for that. And obviously I love going to stag. So yeah, naturally. Did, um, did I get an invite? S- no, Ryan. Okay. You, you would never get you an get invite to one? that. No. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to go stag. Okay. <laughs> so back to <laughs> vacation. So to finish that though, our neighbors are great. We've had nothing yeah. but good experience other than we got, you know, yeah, it's just Thai a, it's bowl going on next door. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sean T's hip hop abs. Sean T, yep. Tony Horton's uh, P90X. Yeah, so back to the vacation. I mean, I'm excited. Get to do it once a, once a winter. So are you... I'm a big people watcher in, like, airports. I don't know how many connecting flights you have, but, like, what's your what are your thoughts on people watching... Yeah, I think you're setting me up here for uh, for the different types of people like we did with the bowling. Sure. Um, I mean, the list goes on. But yeah. So <laughs> today I'll just, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, I'll do it, Ryan. Uh, no, you're right. I mean, that's uh, that's like something that I just like to do is just observe people because people are ridiculous. Um, but we'll just maybe dive into some people that I notice when I am in airports. 
Um, you have the guy who's so cool. So do you know what I mean by AirPods that? AirPods in the ears. AirPods. No, I have AirPods. I do too. Some people frown upon that, but like they're a very useful utility. They're so useful. One of I would say one of Apple's best yeah, so, inventions so far. Yes, I have AirPods. I'll probably catch a little <laughs> flack for that. But are you going to be wearing a blazer with so, like nice kicks and... Well, it's just like this guy's got a got an oversized beanie, a little bit craft beer type of vibes. That type of cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is more like uh like I am going to Coachella almost sure. okay. vibe. Um there's that guy. Uh there is the you're talking more the business yeah. guy. Yep. Those guys are so intimidating airports. Absolutely. They go, they fly like probably, you know, 3 or 4 days a week they're in an airport. Um, so they know what they're doing. They know where they're going and they always, okay. Why is this? Did you just yawn? Yeah, Am I, I that boring mic- to you? Ryan? I almost bit the microphone. Oh my God. <laughs> well, we're looking for a new t-shirt guy. <laughs> this is finally the last straw. Ryan, I want you to, uh, give me the password to your account. So this is it. Huh? Um, and I need you to, uh, you need to hand in your heat press. No, uh, Man, my the, the, the professional guy in the airport that we're talking about, he always has a carry on. He, he never checks a bag, mm-hmm. right? I, and that's smart, but he always has another leather bag on top of the like carry on luggage, a briefcase. Yes. Yeah, some, but then he also might have like Burp another burp. briefcase. Sure. What is in that second leather bag that's sitting on top of there? Is he a drug smuggler? Is it all a front? Yeah, I mean, if he's if it if he has a leather bag on top of his carry on and a briefcase in the other hand, that's a good question. Unless he's carrying around binders of, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but they always have a second bag on top, so look for that next time you're okay. at an airport. Now we could go the traditional route on this for people in an airport, um, like the classic person who claps when the airport when the airplane lands oh yeah don't be that person ever (laughs) i don't think i've ever been graced with being on a flight that has that but apparently that's a thing yeah i've heard it a couple times yeah yeah um there's also the people who like they get anxiety when the plane whatever if you get anxiety fine but it's like you know, like just relax. This is just <laughs> as safe as like almost safer than driving in a car. Yeah. Like statistics prove that flying in an airplane is like one of the safest ways to travel. Mm-hmm. So let's all just relax a little bit here. Yeah, relax, enjoy your flight. Um now I'm gonna um so do you have any types of people that you see in mind? I before well, I just keep rambling here. Yeah, no, you were you were doing great. Um my and this is more so a group of people, but the like once every five year family vacationers who are just overpacked, they're trying to like they're pulling out, you know, whatever. Do you have your boarding pass? Get your boarding pass <laughs> out. Boarding pass. Get, is your, what group are we in? <laughs> what group are we in? Mom has Samuel. Sna- will you get over here and stop messing around with the with the like, little like escalator, <laughs> yeah, flat escalator? Yeah. Will you get over here, yeah. Samuel? We are waiting to board. Yep. Yeah. They're they're all sitting in a gr- in in a group, um, waiting to board. Mom's got all the snacks out because she doesn't want to buy any food on the plane, which I completely get. Like I'm a huge snack guy in the bag. I know he, if you can get it through. Honestly, that should be a part of your page. Can you do like snack of the snack of the day when you're printing shirts? Yeah, like what your snack is Absolutely. because Ryan talks about snacks more than any living human being I've ever met. Yeah, and I mean we we've. We're both gas station people. Oh yeah, um, I've been very vocal about that. Yeah. So. so oh yeah, I, I like that one, Ryan. I, yeah, I, it's, I like, it's like the one that once every like five, six, seven years, the family goes on a vacation. Things like you're not in this environment as much, um, so things tend to get. Uh, dad is also sitting to the side, just like kind of shoulders. The slouched. mom's running the show. She's running the yeah, show. Yeah. Yep. She's um, probably also a hoarder. Yes. She is she's a hoarder. <laughs> yes. Um, she's probably wearing some sneakers with white socks. <laughs> and like this capri- mother like is. capris, like cotton capri capris. Je- or capri jeans or, jeans, or something. Yeah. yeah. 
We're, uh, we're, I think we're on the same and like wavelength. A floral, like a floral shirt, like yep. a floral blouse kind of. The, the haircut is usually cut off like right at the shoulders. Yep. Um, but has done nothing with it. There's yep. no, they didn't curl it. They didn't put any gel or style or mousse in it at all. Yep. It's just... And then it's usually like a, a, a like an eighteen year old, a sixteen year old, a twelve year old, and then like the really young one. Yep. they and have the eight, so many kids. Yeah, the eighteen. Why the do they six- have so many kids? These group of people. <laughs> I don't know. Oh wait, and now I realize why they fly <laughs> once every five years because they have so many yeah. kids. Yeah, now is the time to do it. Yep. This is their year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're going all out with but it. But they're probably but, going on like a three day vacation, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, just think of how pumped that mom is to get all of her kids in one yep. spot. Um, it probably doesn't happen too too often. So this is like her shining moment. Absolutely. What she, any mom should be doing. She lives for just being the lead traveler, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, another, just along for another the group of people is you get the like division three women's <laughs> lacrosse team and they're all wearing the same jumpsuit. Yes. Why do they? What is that a rule in the teams? Do it, they have it, yeah, to wear some the teams. same? Like we used to be required to wear. Um, uh, Who's we, Ryan? Uh, me and the University of Jamestown baseball team. Uh, I the old, my past life. The, yeah, the Jimmies. The Jimmies. Um, we had to wear black sweats, black hoodie, um, and then our baseball cap, and then like a uh, our Jimmy's coat. Or that whatever. seems like a nightmare to bring a bunch of like college kids in an airport and make sure you don't lose anyone and. It man, it's stressful on the coaches. That's why um, you got four assistant coaches. Each one is designated to check bags. Each one has boarding passes. Um, we're talking like twenty five guys in an mm-hmm. airport, and your coach needs to make sure you get to where you need. So, I feel like every time you get on a plane, you're like, is is there gonna be a is there gonna be like a team on my plane? Right. On my plane, like a professional team, or is there gonna be a celebrity? Yeah, it's there always is the, always the chance that you could see someone famous. Yeah, but it's always the D three <laughs> yeah. lacrosse yeah. team from yeah. the East Coast. That's yeah. you know the yeah, but there is like I do the, there is always a chance, Bush Burp. But see that you could see someone famous. That's. I feel like that's kind of like marketing in their sense. Like you recognize those people because they're all wearing the same thing. Yeah. You recognize their division three. You recognize probably what school they're going to. Um, that's true. It's camaraderie, but at, at the same time, it's kind of like a, like a branding move. I so don't know. are you, so my opinion on layovers, I kind of like them. I do too, man. <laughs> like, like some people are like, Oh, I have a two hour layover. Yeah. And I'm like, you unpopular know what? opinion. Well, for me, as like a like a the business side of me, there is nothing more like motivating than like sitting in the airport and seeing like people just walking around like with a purpose. The 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 guy that we talked with the briefcase and yeah. stuff, he's trying to get a business deal done. He's yeah. talking on the phone trying to seal the deal on this. You got I love that. You got vloggers walking to the <laughs> yeah. airport with camera like just like the chaos of it makes mm-hmm. me want to like just sit on my computer and like work and get something done. Yep. Um, so I actually kind of like layovers. So when people are like complaining now a five hour layover, that's tough. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. You got a couple hours where you can sit on your computer, maybe get a bite to eat. I like that. I yeah. don't know how you feel, but no, I see. I always tell myself, like I, I always bring like a book, a book on a, on a flight. I like, used to, I'm going to read this whole book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need to just, I need to set that aside for now. Um, I always bring my laptop, but honestly, like I'm not a, I just like to walk around and like kind of just sit and like, you like watch watching people. airplanes. I'm a people too. watcher. Well, yeah. you like watching airplanes and yeah, it's, it's, it's not as entertaining as watching people. True. Um, but like I'll watch an episode of something on Netflix. I'll, I'll walk around. I'll, I'll hit those. Uh, well, that's, well, that's because. I'm trying to run a run a company, and Ryan's just printing shirts, and so he has time to just walk around and just stare at the ceiling. Yeah, I got to think about what fabric blends we're gonna put yeah, together next. Yeah, he's just looking at people. He walks up behind people and just he just grabs their shirt <laughs> to feel the material, and almost gets arrested for assaulting people. Yeah, but it's ridiculous how expensive like the merch is in airports. We um, need to get into the airport market. 
Yeah, we need to I start mean, selling stuff in airports because we can probably margins would be huge. We, they would look at our tag, so we'd have our you betcha shirts in yeah, there. Yeah, it'd be branded. They'd they'd turn the tag over to look at the price, and it would just say arm and a leg, <laughs> and, that, and that's what the price would be for right. our merch if it was in airports. Um, so no, I'm I don't know as much as I tell myself like, hey, I'm more of like a get stuff done on the plane type of person. Like I don't really need the internet. Just kind of like hop in the Adobe Suite or anything like that. Um, but I like to, I really like to watch or walk around and watch people. Are you, what kind of beverage do you get when the cart lady comes by? Diet Coke or Bloody Mary mix. I like, I like getting a regular Coke. Sure. Um, I like coffee on the plane. Ooh. I do like and coffee. So it doesn't taste good at all. There's a reason to that. I'm not going to get too into depth, but I have one of my close friends. Are you is, about to school me up on something here? Kind of. I'm ready. I'm in session, Ryan. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not going to speak too elaborately on it because I don't exactly know how, how it goes. But one of my really good friends um, is a pilot for Sky West. Um, he's probably listening to the podcast right now. Hi, Sky West pilot. He, he said, if there's one thing to never do is to drink the coffee. On is it just really old or what? Um, the tanks never get flushed out. Um, and when they do like all of that stuff, like I think all of the washout stuff like stays inside the tank. What tank? There's a tank. Like, there's like a, there's like a, a tank of coffee that, it, that is like a pot. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's so much right, of a but pot. But in a traditional sense, it would be the pot. Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yep. But on a plane, it's more, more in bulk. They'll put it in the pot and then they'll bring it around and serve it to people. Um, very unsanitary. I was told to never drink the coffee on a plane. So I probably I never believe will. it. Um, I'm also one of those people that you're just like, if it has caffeine, like give it to me. If it looks <laughs> like coffee, if it tastes like coffee, then I'm good to go. But I, I, to I each their own, 100% yeah. believe that. Though, yeah. Because yeah, but there's so much of that stuff in like airports. Like, well, little, <laughs> I will have to say that bowling alleys are a little bit like airports <laughs> and that are. you sit down in a chair at an airport and there's kind of a film on everything. Yeah. There's kind of yeah. a film on like on, uh, the, like the stainless steel. Uh, so you have yeah. your, like your Even, black, like padded chairs, not padded, but like yep. a whatever. And then there's a stainless steel arms with a pad on top. But the and well that and like even like the trays on the airplane yeah oh the the arm like the plastic arm that There's also did film. you know I don't know if people know this but you can put the armrest that's in the aisle up yeah you have to like just for dangle it though it's like not like a button you, you can't press just or press anything. the button and pull it up no you There's have some... to you have to like you have to like mess around with it a little bit and like poke around and then eventually yeah. there's like that one secret level lever that you do it and every time every time that I get it and I like put it up I like do one of these where I where I look at all <laughs> the other people in the other aisles and they're like watching me so I like slowly put it up like bragging You're like the trendsetter I bet you didn't know that you could put your <laughs> aisle yeah. your aisle yeah. uh, armrest up now will you ever recline your seat oh yeah <laughs> I get in there. You're savage. <laughs> they literally, I, I'm probably, I probably have the most amount of like the most amount of times that people tell me I have to put my seat up in my tray table. Cause I'm just like, you know what? I paid for this flight and I can have my seat back for as long as I want. Yep. Um, but I won't, put, I won't put my seat. seat I back. say that. And then they're like, sir, can you put your seat up? I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Just didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah. This rebellious minded guy who just right. So like I have to wait caves. till they tell me. Yeah. Because they stayed over the speaker, and I'm like, oh, I got another ten minutes. I'm good yeah. to go. But yeah. <laughs> man, airports and bowling alleys—they're two interesting places that, when you really just sit down and talk about it or think about it, they're interesting places to just observe. Wild. Yeah. We act different in airports. We do. Because I feel like we try to emulate people around us. Like, I want to be like that guy with the briefcase. Yeah. Because they give off a Double stigma, man. Double guy. <laughs> like, they give off a vibe that, mm -hmm. like, I want to be a part of. Yeah. I'm excited to go in the airport now. I'm going to be looking for all that. And I hope <laughs> that the listeners, I hope someone's listening to this in an airport right yeah, now. Yeah, that'd be And great. they're looking around and they're like, 
Holy crap. That guy does have a double briefcase. You should... Uh, Ew, there is a film on everything here. So what I want you to do is I want you to try and find that guy, and I want you to put it on the story. I yes. want you to kind of document behind the scenes. All like, right, I will try and find that find guy. Find the family of five. It'll probably find, take me about 35 seconds to sure. find that guy. Yeah, find the guy going to Coachella Find the with AirPods in. Find the businessman who's this on is, the phone. This is like a uh, little bit like a Where's Waldo. Yeah. Where's, yeah, this will be fun for sure. This will be like post like peak viewership of the podcast. So it'll kind of still be fresh in mind. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I like it. This You Betcha Radio podcast was brought to you by our friends at the Bev Buckle. Bev Buckle is a belt buckle that is the world's first retractable drink holder. And you can find them at bevbuckle.com. That's B E V B U C K L E.com. And you can get 15% off of your order by using promo code you betcha with no space Y O U B E T C H A at bevbuckle.com using promo code you betcha for 15% off. Guys, thanks again for tuning into episode eight of the You Betcha Radio podcast. We talked about the ranch girl. We talked about the people in airports. Now I want you to go follow us on social media at O U Betcha. That's at O H H U Betcha. On top of that, Ryan, the t shirt guy, myself, Shameless now plug. has his own social media pages. So go follow me at Ryan, the t shirt guy on Instagram and then just Ryan, the t shirt guy on DM Facebook. DM him and tell him what he should be putting out for content. You razz him a little bit. Yeah, this is yeah, your guys' chance to finally start ripping on Ryan the T-shirt guy because I can't do it all myself. Yep, but uh, I do have this uh, this um, photogenic memory that like I I will see your name and I'll see it come through the T-shirt order and then I may or may you not sabotage it, misplace your print or forget to ship it out. So <laughs> tread lightly or leave you a surprise in your uh, shipping bag. Yeah. So one more social media page. Mom's Hot Dish. It's the new You Betcha meme page, uh, meme videos, meme photos. Um, we're putting a lot of user submission stuff on there. So that's Mom's Hot Dish. Mom's Hot Mom's Dish. Mom's dot Hot Dish on Instagram and Mom's Hot Dish. If you see a profile photo of a tater tot, of a tater tot, that is us. <laughs> Go follow us. I. That was you. Time out. I want. Th- let's. Thanks, Ryan guys. Ryan did a great job there plugging the social medias. You even gave like a little like lead in from what happened. Ryan, you're improving a little bit. I eight like, episodes deep, man. We're, we're getting there. It only took <laughs> eight episodes. <laughs> Check my watch. That's two months of me trying to beat some stuff into his head until he figures it out. But, <laughs> but we're there, baby. <laughs> this proves that a monkey can learn anything. True. <laughs> <laughs> I am Miles, the you bet you guy. May your ranch... Always be runny and your bush light forever be cold. I'll see you on the vacation podcast. I'll be so tan. I'll be so many drinks deep at the pool. <laughs> um, cheers.